I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I am so grateful that you've taken the time out of your busy day to spend some here with us. Yes, us. It's not just me today. Today, we have the absolute pleasure of speaking with Anchika, a dear client of mine who does absolutely amazing work. She is graduating from her undergrad and has an incredibly bright and limitless future ahead of her, but we'll get into that. Before we get started, I just wanted to say that I am so proud of Anchika for getting in to her program of choice. Here is her update. She found out about her admission to her program after we had recorded this episode of the podcast. And so Anshika has provided us with an update as to her admission. Congratulations. I just wanted to provide a quick update. I recently was granted admissions to my program of choice at Columbia University. When I think about how grateful and excited I am for this new chapter in my academic career, I can't help but think about the path I took to get here and the guidance, support, and mentorship I received from Dr. Schneer at the Advancement Spot. I know what I learned from my sessions are tools that I will carry with me throughout my academic career and also when I go into a professional setting. Thank you so much. Hi, Anshika. How are you? Hi, thank you so much for having me here today. I'm good. I'm really glad I get to spend time give my experience and let other people get to know me a little bit better. And I'm also really glad I get to connect with you on a deeper level. Wonderful. I'm so excited to be having this conversation. So let's get started. I would love to hear about you. And I know that our listeners would love to learn a little bit about you. Okay. Well, as you know, I'm Anshika. I'm 22 years old and I've been born and raised in Toronto and I'm currently finishing my undergrad, which is a Bachelor's of Science in Global Health Policy, Management and Systems. And I'm finishing off my last year with a practicum placement at the Dataly Institute of Global Health Research, where I'm basically helping a PhD student with his research in, in regards to the global governance of AMR. Right now, we're seeing an increase in antimicrobial resistance and it's something that we don't want the next COVID to be. So... I'm really excited to get my feet into this direction. It's actually what I centered my master's program applications about. So I'm really excited to get some exposure and experience before heading into that direction directly. And a little bit more about me. I'm also part of two clubs that are very uh, dear to me. They speak directly to my interests and reflect on where I want to ultimately work in in the future. I'm the vice president of the Health and Medical Law Society. And I'm also part of Empowering Women in Health, a student-led organization that aim to highlight the disparities that Canadian women in health face in Canada and also aims to uplift and sustain leadership in our narratives. Amazing. You are busy as ever. No time to waste. You're really working in the areas that you love. And this is something that is so important. And I can tell, and through our work together, I've been able to tell how just how passionate you are because you actually love the work that you're doing. You're actually stimulated intellectually by the work that you're doing. You see value. You see importance in the work that you're doing. And it's absolutely inspiring just to listen to you talk about the work that you're doing. Thank you so much for that. Well, this is all what I'm working towards and, you know, the future of hopefully hopefully pursuing. And I'm really glad, uh, and I know we'll get into this later, to have had your mentorship along this journey with me. So thank you so much. I'm so happy, so, so happy to have worked with you and to continue working with you. Oh, my gosh. So when you contacted me to do some work together in Apply Yourself the Advancement Spot, I just knew that we had to get started right away. Can you tell me a bit about your experience getting started with me and and how that that went for you? Yes. So initially, before I met you and before I knew about Apply Yourself, months before the application was due, I can recall 
just sitting like the summer, even before school started, thinking about what do I need to put on this piece of paper? How can I write about myself in a small amount of space without, you know, getting the wrong details in or without telling too much about certain aspects about myself? Just really overthinking all of it. And I remember going on TikTok, YouTube, and so many other platforms trying to help myself. And it wasn't that those weren't helpful, just that it kind of seemed that everyone was trying to be different or give their input. And what works for someone will not work for me. And I realized that soon enough. So it just became night after night thinking about, okay, I don't think I want to submit the application anymore or I have what it takes and just prolonging it until one night I thought, if I don't do it today, I know I'm never going to do it. So I wrote like a massive amount of pages just about myself, my interests, and literally anything and everything I could think of. And that's when I knew it really wasn't working. It was just like a cycle of trying to be productive and get work done, but nothing really worked for me. And when I heard about Apply Yourself, I recall I contacted you the week before my application was due, not thinking I would... uh, Honestly, I was like, it's worth a shot. Like it's a week before I know everyone's busy, but I need to try to do what I can do to help myself. And when I contacted you and we had a consultation and we had a plan for me that was well suited to not only my time frame, but the kind of quality of content I needed, I realized right off the bat that this was really the mentorship that I was looking for in all of these videos and so forth. And I'm really proud to say and happy to say that my experience was very much tailored to me. And that was really important to capture my insights, my experience, my knowledge, but even more so exactly what I needed at that moment of time, which was like a hand to guide me through the process and show me more than it being something that's nerve wracking, the application, it's an opportunity. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I remember during our first conversation together, you said, this is my deadline. And I went, that's next week. (laughs) Yeah. And I said, okay, we're getting started and we're getting started tomorrow. And we did and we worked together. And and so before we get into that process of working together, take me back to before you started thinking about, you know, your applications to grad school. How did you feel before you actually got started? I knew I wanted to further my education. And I know like the kind of setting, like I mentioned before, that I wanted to work in global governance of infectious diseases, political science, international relations, and so forth, they require a strong educational base. And I knew that undergrad is great for me in a sense that it's a start of something, but it's definitely not something that I can use to directly go and work towards where I want to be. So in knowing that I really wanted to continue my education, I thought about a master's program, but more so where I fit in a school that is able to cater to my interests and a school that will help me grow. Right now, the university I'm in, I've had these amazing opportunities and experiences, but sometimes I do catch myself in a kind of the intersection of uncertainty and fear, not knowing if I'll have the same opportunities once I leave. And so because of all of these factors, I know continuing my education was really important to me. So before I got into even applying to a master's program, I really hashed out every single aspect I wanted to achieve, what I want to do. And just yesterday, actually, I was looking at this timeline of goals I wanted to achieve. And I'm really happy to say I got most of them done. It's not to say that that doesn't take away from a lot of stress I had, a lot of anxious moments and not knowing what direction to go towards when thinking about where I want to take or not where I want to take my career, but how far I can take my education to get the career that I want. It was a lot of dedication, a lot of motivation and discipline leading up to that. Yes, absolutely. And and then once you actually got started with your applications before before you contacted me, how did that go? That was a very rocky, I would say, journey. Like I mentioned, I wasn't even able to kind of like put my thoughts on a piece of paper. I couldn't open my laptop to even title a document, master's application. It kind of felt like everything was happening way too soon. So... For me, I would definitely say uh, before reaching out to apply yourself, it was just a continuous cycle of writing an application. And then I would think that, oh, you know what? I know the weaknesses of this. I'm going to write another one. And it would just be a replica of the first one, but a few different sentences. What I realized was missing once I reached out to apply yourself and you were able to mentor me and guide me through this process was I was missing a lot of 
significance of what I've done and the impact that it has. Our sessions actually made me think about, you mentioned this, it's not just about where you want to, like what you're applying to, but more so the kind of life you want to lead and the kind of legacy you want to lead. Those two big questions really help me contextualize why an education is so important to me and why I should stick to submitting my applications. I mentioned earlier that there was a lot of times where I was like, this is really hard to write. I don't even know if I should apply. But just having that guidance and really a, like a tap on the shoulder that other people have done this, so why can't it be you? That was really motivating and honestly, really inspiring to me. That is so amazing. And when you said, you know, it's not about, it's not just about the programs that you want to apply to, but it's about the life that you want, the legacy that you want to live. You gave me chills because that is absolutely at the foundation of all of the work that I do. And that's why I believe in this work so much. And that's why it works when we work together, because it's, it's totally our process, our strategy, our skills development is totally based on what you want to achieve, the kind of life that you want and surpassing any sort of imagined future that you can imagine for the better. And so helping you get there is just such a such a joy for me. It's so wonderful to hear you reflect on that. I really, really appreciate that you shared all of that. Thank you. So what else do you remember about that time working on your applications before we started to work together? One of the main things that I remember is that in in our coursework and in education and academia in general, we're taught a vast range of different topics. And they're really important, but never how to advance within higher academia or how to go from an academic to a professional setting. That's kind of the figure it out on your own aspect. And even when we think about mentorship services that are offered at universities, they don't directly touch on these topics. So I was kind of lost looking for, again, resources on TikTok or YouTube, trying to supplement that on my own. It was tough to navigate this area of, again, uncertainty and fear and what that does not for, he doesn't do it for everyone, but one thing I did see that it was doing for me was kind of making me shy away from these opportunities, from the opportunity of applying to a master's program. Like I said, it was happening all so soon. I realized I'm literally approaching the last year of my degree and I really want to further my education, but unfortunately, I just don't know how to. I know I have to write, you know, I have to submit an application. I have to give my transcript, my resume and other supplemental documents and even a statement of interest. But what really goes into those documents? Those are just four things they want from me. And there's so much more to me in academia, my academic experiences, et cetera. Like I didn't know how to bring together all of these aspects and present the best version of myself. Again, on a very small area, a very small amount of space. Then there was the whole aspect that some schools, they don't do interviews now. And I was hoping for the opportunity to do one just so I can present a little bit more outside of what I've written on the paper. But since that wasn't an opportunity, it just became more difficult for me to put my application into context in a way that whether or not I was able to envision myself in a master's program. So leading up to meeting up with Apply Yourself, it was just thinking about all of the ways that university is a, is a great thing to be engaged with in academia, sorry, but just not enough of how to help students get to where they want to be. Yeah. I completely agree with you. There aren't any resources for students when it comes to skills development in the professional setting, transitioning out of academia into the professional setting, or skills development as skills development pertains to the creation of applications that reflect you and all of the effort and hard work that you've put in to get to where you are. So this is absolutely one of the factors that drives me to want to help you and and students like you so much in this process, because you absolutely deserve to advance. You absolutely deserve to advance. And advancement never ends, right? Advancement never ends. And so how can I be there for you in order to help you get to where you want to go and beyond? And that takes skill, right? It's not luck. It's not chance. There's a little bit of maybe luck and chance in, you know, through the process. But in terms of application writing and development and skills development, 
that's not chance. And skills development is not intuitive. Application writing is not intuitive. You weren't born knowing how to write an application. And so it's so important that we realize this ahead of time so that we can prepare ourselves in order to actually meaningfully take advantage of these opportunities for strategic advancement and skills development in the way that suits you. Definitely. I just wanted to add, like, I remember even after I submitted my application, one of the main things that was really important to me was this great sense of relief. I watched a documentary really very recently, and the, one of the characters in this documentary, he was talking about how when you win a trophy, it's not the trophy that you're focused on. It's the sense of relief that you did your best and you know you did your best. And that was something that stuck with me. After submitting my applications, I thought, well, the best I could have done and was able to do is something that I did do during our segments. And now it's just a waiting game that I'm not stressed about. I actually feel quite good about this period. That's amazing to hear. That's amazing to hear because so often I hear that once the applications are submitted, applicants say like, now the stress starts because it's now it's a waiting game. But I love that you felt relief. That's so important. And it's such a, it's such an indication that you did your absolute best and you're so comfortable with the work that, that you did and the work that we did together. Do you remember how you felt in the period of the three days or three or four days consecutively of working together in that week prior to your application deadline? How did you, how was that experience for you? It was intensive, but how was it for you? I think the the main thing that really set the tone for all of my sessions with you were you just went straight into my application. You skimmed what I've had, like what I wrote or what I didn't write. And then we went together on the university's websites. And that was something that was really meaningful to me. It wasn't like this kind of cookie cutter approach that you have for everyone you work with. I really felt like my sessions were tailored to me. You went on to the university's websites and you researched the faculty, clubs, the kind of researcher, sorry, the kind of research the faculty does and so forth. And what it did was not only write in my application like, oh, pick me, but I think you should consider me because my interests align with yours. So just by that small act of, you know, going through the university's websites and making sure we understand what the university embodies, to me spoke in a way where I'm able to, one, strengthen my interests with the school and two, want to be more engaged in the master's application process. Because like I mentioned before, I went through a period where I was like, I don't think I want to apply anymore. And like, even now you just said everyone deserves to advance. And that was something I did feel intimately, even if it wasn't explicitly mentioned. And just to compliment that, one thing I really appreciated, like going back previously to when I wasn't with Apply Yourself and doing my application on my own, I felt a lot of competition. You know, these are programs that have over 200 plus applicants and they only accept 80 people. So that was another thing that I was constantly thinking about what makes me different or likable or what makes me stand out from all of these other applicants. And one thing I really appreciated was you did not once mention competition. Rather, again, you made it seem like an opportunity. It wasn't really a race, but something that you can set up for yourself really to advance. And it was just really far from any type of competition. I didn't even think once about all of these other 200 applicants and who would be accepted or not. It really made me focus on myself, what I can offer, and what's really important, whether or not my interests were reflected in the university. That's amazing. And I think it's so important that you that you raise that because that is thinking about the competition is often what paralyzes people. Yes. So when clients come to me, automatically, the first thing that they talk to me about is other people, not themselves. Right. They talk to me about the competition and I have to take a step back for them. And I say, listen, we know that they exist. We get it. But focusing on them is actually taking away from focusing on you and the opportunities and the experiences that you have. So let's showcase you and what you've got. And so being able to take a step away from the competition, how did that feel for you in actually putting together your application pieces, your application material? How did it actually feel once you were able to forget about 
other people? What I felt like from the first segment that we had was that a great sense of motivation. I thought that, you know, and like this just goes back to, again, like my career goals are not really traditional. And I've had a lot of people tell me, you know, this is not really realistic and you're going to fail and a wide variety of other negative comments. To a certain extent, criticism is great, but it just makes you seem or sorry, feel like you should opt for something that you're not interested in. And I remember reading my application to you. You were one of the very few people who told me, this is actually great. Like, I see you have potential and I, I'm basically rooting for you and we can make this happen. So that was extremely motivating for me to keep going. Oftentimes we don't really have that. Students don't really have that type of support, especially if they're going into fields that are oversaturated or just not traditional, like global governance. And I think that just having your support from the very beginning and choosing this as a career path and helping me see how this is a possibility and it's not something that's far-fetched was extremely motivating for me. And that was the motivation that the previous seven months was really lagging. It was very like episodic. And I just had a week to submit the application. That motivation stayed with me. It was consistent throughout. And I honestly think it even translated to discipline. That was something I saw myself doing. Like, I can't really wait for a burst of motivation. If this is something I like, then I have to be dedicated towards it. So it was a wide variety of skills I can, you know, mention, but those were the most important for me. That's amazing. I think it's so, what I'm hearing is that you started to believe in yourself. Yes. You started to believe in yourself and your capabilities. And I remember very clearly looking at everything that you had brought to me and the schools that we were researching. And I remember telling you, like, this is completely in alignment with what you do and what you like. Like, there's nothing out of alignment here. We just have to help you believe that this is possible, right? And that if you want it, let's go get it. It was very motivating. Like, looking back, that was one of the main things that stuck with me. And I think that's also one of the main reasons why I'm not in a period of discomfort or like, oh, now the stress begins now that I've submitted my application, rather comfort, which is really, um, you know, relieving to know. Yeah, I love, I love that. That's so, and it's comforting to me to know that you're still in a period of comfort. I think that that just speaks to all of the, to, to your confidence in the work that we did together and in yourself. Yes, I can definitely see that. So we know that the work that we did together was intensive. So we would get together because so what we did was we condensed one of our main programs into the seven days in order so that you would submit on time and actually ahead of time. (laughs) You submitted ahead of time. You submitted early (laughs) because we submit early here just in case of any tech problems, which we don't want to be the decider of anything. So we had pretty intensive days for like several hours at a time and Then at the end of those days, we would, you would leave with homework to do for the next day. So what was it like to engage in that intensive work over those few days and then go off and do that homework at night to bring back to our next session the next day? It was again, like the whole, like the homework, I would say it was more like, this is stuff you, these are skills you should be able to, you know, have to help yourself advance. So it was kind of more like, It wasn't as dreadful as like homework scenes. It was a lot more like uplifting. So the, some of the skills that I learned and was able to carry with myself throughout from meeting with you and then throughout the day were how to articulate my thoughts and how to proofread what I wrote. I've submitted other applications after my master's applications. And those are two main things that I'm able to do at a very critical level. I would say now I can, like, if I compare what I've written now to before I met with you at Apply Yourself, I do see a big difference. There's a lot more cohesiveness. And, you know, I remember reading like a lot of research papers and thinking sometimes this is so bad or wait, this is actually really good. I want to write like that, but how can I? And one thing I also did stress to you was I don't want to be repetitive. I know sometimes a lot of people want to get their point across and repetition is something that just seems natural, but that's something I really wanted to stray away from. And I did learn how to do that from you. I don't know exactly what techniques were used behind that, but I can proudly say that now, even when I'm writing research papers, I'm able to be analytical, cohesive, and have a really, like maintain a really good flow without feeling the need to repeat myself or feeling the need to repeat myself to fill in for content. 
So in a way, I think it also helped me think critically and analytically as well. I love that you've developed skills. This is the point, right? The point is not for me to, you know, put everything in place for you. It's to help you develop the skills that you need in order to advance in any way that you want to. So the fact that you've been able to take what we've done together and apply it already yeah. is so amazing. I agree. That's all you like. That's amazing. Thank you so much for that. Like I literally am thinking about my research with, for example, an AMR at the Data Lay Institute, and I do see myself using those skills a lot. That's wonderful. I'm so happy to hear that. I'm so happy to hear that. So can you talk about, maybe reflect on our live sessions together? Yeah. How um, did those, how did those go? How did you feel during the live sessions? What did you learn? So the first thing again was we just kicked off the meeting right with how are you doing and how's your application looking and really analyzing it and critiquing it, but not critiquing it again in a way where I'm comparing myself to applicants who may have a stronger experiential background than I do or a stronger GPA than I do. We focused on me, which I really appreciated. And that really built a sense of comfort throughout all of the sessions. I didn't feel like if I came the next day with something that I wasn't sure about, you would say, like, this is really bad. <laughs> we're we're going to change this all up. But rather, it was very smooth and in a way where I didn't feel that I was going to be judged on what I wrote. Like, for example, I didn't know if the diversity statement I wrote was a good fit for me or if I'm writing too philosophically or theoretically. But when I showed it to you, I did not, you did not once judge what I wrote. I wrote a lot about personal statements of, you know, my identity, like my religion, where my parents came from and so forth. And I was really glad to know and relieved also. I keep saying relieved, but I was actually relieved to know that what I wrote isn't bad. And if there was an area, which there was that I could have improved on, you recommended it to me in a way that did not make me feel embarrassed for what I wrote or like, I didn't feel like I had to hide this part of who I am. And I really feel that like in academia, and I've also had experiences where diversity is celebrated, but when certain situations come up or certain topics, it becomes very taboo. That was something I was scared would happen if I submitted my application. But your expertise really guided me and gave me comfort in knowing that what I wrote wasn't, you know, too far off the page or wasn't something that I had to work too hard towards. There were skills that you provided me with, which I was able to readily use and you were re readily able to oversee that. So that comfort was really instilled in the various areas where you were able to oversee my work, but also give me suggestions. Yeah, I remember the content that you wrote in those statements and we just needed to refine, right? We needed to bring you in to those statements rather than those statements being sort of more philosophical in nature. We just needed to bring you into them to really ground them in you, your experience and the still relating back to the kind of impact that you want to have. And so I think it's so important that part of what we work on is that every single piece of the application complements every other piece of the application. And so nothing feels like it doesn't fit. Everything has a place and we make sure of that. And I remember, I remember working on this with your materials and you did, you, you took all of the coaching and, and the strategy and, and you really worked it all in ultimately to an application that to complete an application that was top notch, like so strong, such a strong application. Thank you. I also wanted to quickly add one of the things that I'll, I won't forget was again, going back to the whole, you didn't have a cookie cutter method. You uh, tailored to me and my interests. But also something that I was really, really appreciative of was you always ask me when making a suggestion, is this something that you like? Or is this something that you think will make your submission stronger? Or do you think this fits with your work? I think to have that, just to, you know, pose those questions to me, really made me appreciative of the fact that you weren't trying to change my content per se, but rather just make it stronger. And you still cared about what I wrote, but you just knew ways where I can present, again, the best version of myself. So thank you for that. 
Oh, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. And I'm so happy to hear that because that's absolutely true. It's absolutely true that I totally value your experience, your impact, the values that you bring to the table, your goals, and everything in your application has to be aligned with you. That's why it's so important that everything, all of our work together, totally aligns with you. That's that's at the end of the day, if it's not about you, it's about somebody else, and then it's not yours. That's so true. And we want to make sure that the schools know you. And I truly felt that way when submitting my application and writing it with you. And again, like I can totally attribute my state of comfort right now to those very segments that we had and the way you facilitated each of them. Amazing. Amazing. So let's shift gears a little bit to talk about how the way that you see yourself has changed from before we worked together to after we worked together. So before we worked together, my application was almost like my whole personality. I was just this person who had an application to write and it wasn't written. And I felt like that took up most of my days for those seven to eight months. But now after working with you, I realize those applications are just one part of who I am, that there's so many more opportunities I can, you know, apply for confidently now and seize. And I honestly even feel like sometimes, and I've seen myself doing this, is that when opportunities are not present for me, I more articulated and making them there. So I'm really glad to have been able to articulate the various skills you gave me and kind of apply them again, not only in academia, but also outside. So now I realize that, you know, my application is not just all I am or all of who I am. There's a lot more, you know, I'm still doing practicum. I still have a research position and there's still so much I have to look forward to. So I'm not stuck at that part where I was uncertain and a little fearful. That uncertainty has really been overpowered by relief. That's one of the main gear switches for me was just turning uncertainty into relief and believing in myself. Yeah. And that means that you can sleep at night. Yeah. Peacefully. We're right? thinking if I don't do this tonight, I'm never going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I remember during our sessions, you were, you were so at ease during the sessions because the the process that we were going through, you could tell was working and yes. you could tell that you were already seeing massive transformations in yourself and your work. And I could tell that the next day when you came back, you were like calmer than the day before. Every single day, you were more calm than the day before, not more stressed. Yes, definitely. I like how you said more nights of sleep. Just very comforting to know that, like I keep saying, I presented the best version of myself, but you really only have a few pages to tell them who you are, why you're interested in what you want to do. And I think I used all of those spaces very appropriately. Yeah, all of those pages and all of those words. We were very, very purposeful with language choice, with sentence structure, grammar, everything. And I think one of the most important things is that we began with proper sentence structure, proper formatting. And that really allowed us to not have to worry about formatting or anything later. It took a lot of time. Like I had a lot of time saved. I was able to do my work, but also have you review it. So it wasn't like I was just, you know, doing everything with you and not really learning anything. I had that strong mentorship base where I was able to have your support, but then also be autonomous and kind of see how I can like hone these skills. So that was something I, again, still carry with me now. I love that. And so through our work together, What did you learn about applications? But I think more importantly, what did you learn about yourself? So one of the main things I learned about my application was how I underestimated how powerful and important a resume is. And I think it's honestly one of the first things that even outside of grad school, people see about you. That's, again, how you present yourself. And mine was done very poorly, especially with the tricks and techniques that you gave me. I realized mine didn't really have an organization. The content I put was just simply listing things, no impact, you know, no significance at all. So I was just kind of, it looked like it, what, I w- what I was going to submit was my rough copy. So after meeting with you, I realized how important it is to have a strong re- resume and that it's not impossible to do. And I didn't have to go through so many different platforms on TikTok or different ones online to learn how to make a competitive resume. The one that you provided me with, 
and, you know, walked me through and told me what should be included and what shouldn't is something I have not seen anywhere else. So I'm really confident in believing that my resume slash CV is really unique to what is submitted to the school. I have not seen anyone else's like that. And I feel like I'm bragging a little bit here now, but I'm really proud of the way it turned out. And even now applying to other research positions or jobs, I don't feel hesitant about my resume, rather more eager to submit it now. I think it's so important to pull out that you're not insecure about your resume anymore. You're like excited to send it in. Yes. That's a huge, huge transformation. You're Mm -hmm. confident in your resume, in your CV. And those are, of course, two different things, but we we created them both. And the fact that you're actually excited to let people see it and not, oh, no, like, I hope nobody sees this. You know, I'm afraid to submit it. What are they going to think? That's huge. That's huge that you're you've got the confidence in your resume or your CV, because that is the first thing that people see, along with your personal statement or your statement of intent. But now you're going to use that resume or the CV, depending on whatever you're applying to in the future, you're going to use that for future applications, future job applications. And so you can have absolute confidence in the formatting, in the structure and in the way that that we strategize how to include your experience in addition to what to include. So I'm so excited to hear that that you're excited to to send your your resume or CV to whoever will accept it now. (laughs) Yes. And like, just to add on to that, like looking back at my first rough draft, my resume, it kind of seems like if you don't know how to write a good resume, you're essentially throwing all of your efforts down the drain because no one's going to care about it as much as you did. And, you know, the format I previously thought was really good. I'm really glad I didn't submit that because it really would have put all of my efforts down the drain. No one would have cared as much about my, you know, volunteer placements, my research placements, what I'm doing outside of school, if I didn't put it in the way that you helped me put it in. That's so important. That's such an important realization to have. And that's such an important moment of growth, I think. So that's that's so great to hear. And and now maybe you can reflect on what you learned about yourself through the process. So one thing I learned about myself throughout our segments was that just takes having the right guidance and mentorship and even expertise to really instill in myself that I can learn how to do these things as well. I don't always need to, you know, quickly Google something like, how do I write a resume? How to make a competitive resume? Now, because these are skills I learned, I can apply them when I want to, you know, advance in my educational career or move to a professional setting. And just going back to my engagement with my clubs and what I've learned in coursework, these skills are not readily available for students and they're harder for women uh, because these are just environments and yes, skills that we're not predisposed to. And uh, these are things that need to be learned. And I really feel that you took the time to pass down this knowledge to me. And that was something that was really great to me. I was, again, these services are not really present in universities. And the way that you were mentoring me was something that I'm able to carry with myself. And I kind of feel like since I had this from you, I also know that I can be of help not only to other people, but more strengthened in my own abilities when I go about advancing my career and my education and so forth. I think that having confidence in yourself is like the one of the most important things that you can have. Believing in yourself, that's huge. And going from a place where seven months before we started working together to not even wanting to open your computer to a place now where you're telling me you're excited to submit your application, you're excited for the next one is such a huge transformation and such a huge testament to the work that you did and how seriously you took the process, right? I remember during our sessions, you just like absorbed everything and we really dug deep. We really dug deep and I really appreciated everything that you shared with me, your honesty, your candor, your openness, because in learning about you, I also learned about what was important to you, what was significant to you, what kind of impact you wanted to have, who you wanted to help. And it was really through that conversation that we could really shape 
and, and strategize around an application that really reflected who you are and what you bring to the table. Because it's not only about the schools, right? Yeah. It's not just, oh, I hope they let me in. That's not all it's about. It's also about, do you actually want to go there? Where do you want to go? And who can actually, which schools can actually serve you and your future? Definitely. What schools have the faculty expertise that will actually help you advance, right? And I, I really felt that on your end. And just to like build on when you mentioned transformation, that's the word I was missing in my answer. But what I learned about myself was that I can transform with these skills and also a mindset that's more eager to seek out opportunities as opposed to shying away from them because I didn't know how to really simply present myself. That's amazing. That's such an amazing shift. And I'm so happy you brought up the word mindset. Mindset is so important to talk about. And we have a previous podcast episode on growth mindset versus scarcity mindset. And so what I'm hearing is that you shifted from having a scarcity mindset, thinking about the competition, there's not enough room for me, I don't belong there, or there's no there's no space. You shifted from that to, I belong there. I belong there. There is space for me. There's opportunity for me. And I'm going to go get it. That's exactly it. So I'm so happy to to hear that. And it has been a short time. Like, let's just talk about the time frame that we're talking about. We we knew each other a little bit before, but we worked together formally for one week. Yes. One week. And at the time of recording, we worked together formally approximately, would you say, three weeks ago? I bu- Yes, three weeks ago. Yeah. So this is unreal transformation that you have experienced and that I'm so happy to be a, a cheerleader in for you along your journey because you have really taken your future by the reins and you're driving. It's no one else's choice. It's your choice. And thank you so much for that. Like I keep saying, you know, your mentorship and guidance, but that has remained super consistent throughout all of our three segments. And my main takeaway from that was transformation is possible and I can show you how to do that. So thank you for that. Absolutely. I'm so, so thrilled to hear that. So finally, I think that this is a really nice question to close on. What advice would you give yourself seven months ago, or I suppose now eight months ago? I would tell myself to not bombard myself with scrolling through TikTok to find the right video or researching on Google to find the right resource. And I would tell myself to really focus and believe in what I want to study and think about why it's so important to me. I would have told myself months before instead of a week before to reach out to you at Apply Your Soul to really have the the months long package that you have for mentorship. I just had a week and it was really powerful for me, even if it was on Zoom. I know I had that support that you were always providing with. You can email me or if anything goes wrong with your application, just let me know. Those are all really meaningful for me. And I know that if I had more time before my application, as opposed to just the week, I would have been not, I I am still like very prepared. I'm not taking away from that, but I think I would have learned or grasped even deeper to what I know now. So I would give myself that advice. That's amazing. And I think that also really important is to, realize that believing in yourself is a function of mindset. Definitely. And that can change as soon as you give yourself the opportunity in order for that change to happen, right? Mm-hmm. That change comes out of investment in yourself and it and, and out of actually recognizing here's an opportunity for you to advance. Let's do it. Definitely. It's just a shift from thinking of the competition to just yourself. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Well, do you have any final thoughts that you want to leave our listeners with? Well, I listened to your other podcasts and they were extremely helpful for me. So I'm really hoping this is helpful for someone else who is probably for in my shoes that I would pre- previously was in. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And I cannot wait to see what happens next for you. Thank you so much for having me here today. It was a pleasure speaking and sharing my story. Thank you so much. And thank you to those of you who are listening. And we'll see you next time.
Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at Apply Yourself Global and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.